So I'm Katie Morgan. I work in pediatric urology uh, at the University of Virginia, and I'm just going to chat with you a little bit about what I do, how I got here, what a nurse practitioner does, and some ways that I use Dr. Anderson does every single day. I couldn't do my job without um, the work that he does. Just a little bit about me. So I'm from um, the Hampton Roads area of um, Virginia. Now I live in Charlottesville or close to Charlottesville in central Virginia. And I decided to become a nurse in high school for sure. I did not know really what to do with myself. I had, I really actually wanted to be a teacher for a long time and I had various other interests and I was kind of stuck and didn't know what to do. And I enjoyed science in high school. Um, I especially enjoyed biology and I enjoyed chemistry. I had this really awesome chemistry teacher, um, this very nerdy older gentleman who I would go to his house sometimes actually to show me his butterfly garden and we just kind of become became friends, um, my boyfriend in high school and I. So he was definitely an inspiring person for me. Um, and I knew I enjoyed science um, and I knew I enjoyed working with people and helping people. And I'd spent some time volunteering in a hospital. I didn't really know what to do. And my parents um, would not support me going to college unless I had some sort of plan for my life. And so I kind of put all of my, uh, made a little list of what I wanted in a career. And I came up with a nurse. And I didn't really quite know what I was getting myself into until I got into it. It's been a great field. After um, high school, I went to the University of Virginia. Um, I got my undergraduate um, Bachelor of Science in Nursing from, from UVA. Um, so that was a four-year degree to become a nurse. Um, and there's really multiple ways to become a nurse. It becomes really confusing when you're potentially thinking about how to talk to someone about how to go into nursing, because there's lots of paths that can take you there. There's like diploma programs in hospitals. There's um, associate's degree programs through community colleges, there's traditional four-year uh, bachelor degree programs, there's accelerated programs, there's um, something called a CNL program or clinical nurse leader where you actually get a master's degree for someone that already has a bachelor's and then um, they're actually a registered nurse that way. So it's, it's a little bit muddly when you're trying to think about how people can become a nurse. So there's lots of ways to do that. Um, so that's what I did, the four-year um, BSN program. And then after that point, I worked at um, the University of Virginia Hospital for about two years on the inpatient pediatric floor as a floor nurse. And then at that point, I had I had sort of like had this plan in my brain that I was going to become a nurse practitioner. And so I kind of went forward with that, not even realizing, honestly, the, the amount of things I could do, quote unquote, just as a nurse, even though it's not just as a nurse at all. There's lots of opportunities that I didn't even know were available at that time. But alas, I went to um, grad school. Um, I went to Penn, University of Pennsylvania for their um, acute care pediatric nurse practitioner program. So that's what the long initials after my name mean, um, acute care certified pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, and during that time I was in school, I also worked at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in their oncology and bone marrow transplant unit, which I really, really loved. And then after that, I moved back to Charlottesville, continued on as the nursing job as a home health nurse for adult patients um, for about a year. Um, and then I got my current job um, which is in pediatric urology, um, and I've been here for about five years. I have some really great pets, which I thought was more fun to show than other um, academic pictures. Um, and I also have an awesome husband who's a special education teacher um, in Charlottesville uh, City Schools, um, and I really respect everything you all do every day. Um, I could not do the job that you do. Really, I just have so much, so much respect for all of you and um, the work that you do every day with our kiddos. So thank you. Um, so that's a little about kind of how I got here. Um, I think it is a little bit confusing about also what a nurse practitioner is, and there's lots of sort of nurse words that are thrown around. And so I wanted to explain a little bit about um, what, what does being a nurse practitioner mean? So, um, so nurse practitioners are typically start out as a registered nurse. Um, and I think the most effective nurse practitioners have some degree of of years of experience as a registered nurse. There are some programs that you can go straight into being a nurse practitioner without working as a nurse. Um, and um, I think it's probably more helpful to work as a nurse, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, so a nurse practitioner has a master's or doctoral degree and then goes through a program with extensive training in how to take care of patients. So diagnosis and management of all kinds of acute issues, so that means like if you walk into the emergency room or urgent care and you have a sore throat or an earache or you break your arm, that's an acute problem. 
um, lots of people with complex issues, so lots of different medical issues that come together, um, and then chronic health issues. So that might be something like um, uh, asthma or um, COPD or uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or heart failure, something that someone's living with for a long time. So um, we take care of all of those things. Now we have to pass a board certification exam um, and then maintain continuing education on a yearly basis to continue our practice. Nurse practitioners are able to take care of the whole patient. So we're able to diagnose, um, manage all sorts of different diseases. We're able to prescribe medicines. We're able to perform procedures, um, order and interpret labs and tests. Um, and nurse practitioners function in a wide variety of places. So um, you might traditionally think that we work in a hospital, such as emergency room or um, uh, intensive care unit on an inpatient floor in a specialty service, um, like pain management or something like that. We work a lot in outpatients, so primary care, um, your primary care provider might be a nurse practitioner, or um, I work in specialty care, so when you need to specifically talk about your kidneys and bladders, um, you come see me in urology. Um, NPs might work in urgent care. Um, NPs work a lot in rural and underserved areas, um, and a lot of nurse practitioners will even run their own practice, especially in these areas where there's otherwise um, not great access to care. Um, NPs also work in the VA and military hospitals, nursing homes, long-term care, um, schools and colleges, a variety of public health. And that's just kind of a snippet of where we might work. There might be nurse practitioners working in other places as well. So what do I do all day? This is the question I, when someone's like talking about a job that I don't really understand, I always sort of am like, okay, well that all sounds nice in theory, but like, what do you actually do all day? So I wanted to tell you a little bit about that. So I have some ridiculous cartoons here with you in my little slides, so bear with me. So I talk about kidneys and bladders all day, and I talk about pee and poop all day, and I talk about private parts all day. So I see patients in clinic, um, in an outpatient clinic um, here in Charlottesville connected with UVA, um, and patients come to see me for um, their visit, like just like you'd go potentially. So I have sort of a weird job, and I always am talking to kids about stuff that no one really wants to talk about, like no one really wants to come to someone and talk about their pee and poop, especially when you're 14 and having problems and feeling embarrassed. And so I sort of just tell everyone I have a really strange job, but um, these are really important parts of our body. And when they're not working correctly, um, they can be very problematic and very distressful and really impact your life. So um, I think it's important. I also do some get to do some other stuff, which is really cool. So I also teach in the School of Nursing um, for UVA, um, do a variety of sort of one course, like single course um, teaching, um, so for example, this spring I'm teaching um, nurse practitioner students uh, physical assessment skills. So I teach them how to, for, for example, like look in eyes and look in ears and palpate bellies. And um, I really like to do that. It keeps up my skills um, and I really enjoy teaching as well. Um, I get to do some leadership stuff. So this is how Kim found me, goes through the Virginia Council of Nurse Practitioners. It's a um, group that um, basically advocates for nurse practitioners in the state of Virginia and provides networking and educational opportunities. Um, so I'm involved in leadership in that. Um, and then I get to do some research and publish, um, which I really like to do um, and feels really meaningful to me. So I kind of get to put it all together. I feel really grateful for the job that I have and that I have the opportunity to do all of this stuff. Not all nurse practitioners have the capacity or have the support in their job to do this. Um, so I feel really lucky um, that I do have that for where I work. I wanted to just give some examples of how I think about anatomy and physiology all day, every day. So I couldn't do my job effectively without a knowledge of how things work in the body. So for example, so understanding um, this really complex relationship between um, the brain and the bladder is really important. Um, we can't pee normally or correctly or keep our pee inside of our bodies at times when we're not on the toilet. Um, if our brain and bladder are not all working in really close collaboration with each other. Um, and when these things don't work correctly, um, things don't work right. So uh, for example, um, our blood information that our bladder gets about peeing is the, again, this really complex um, network of signals that come from our brain. Um, and then we have lots of uh, sensors and receptor cells that also tell us about when it's time to pee. And um, 
cells that help our bladder contract, there's all of this coordination that happens. So for example, um, I see a lot of patients with spina bifida and that's where they have um, an interruption in their lower spinal cord. So the spinal cord is not formed correctly from birth um, and that impacts their bladder. So their bladder may be um, not working well at all or maybe working at high pressures, which can cause issues with their kidneys, um, all related to how the spine is not correctly sending information to the bladder. Um, another example of how this all goes into play is if you have things like overactive bladder symptoms. So that's a really common um, complaint that kids and adults have. Um, so that's things like when you have to pee all the time or when you have to pee really, really bad all of a sudden and you can't hardly get to the bathroom in time um, or you leak some pee because you can't get to the bathroom in time. All of that has to do with um, kind of an overfiring of our bladder that's connected to our brain. Um, over here on the right is just a picture of a kidney ultrasound. Um, and this is a picture of a um, ureteropelvic junction obstruction. So, um, you know, I'll show you why this matters here. Um, if I can go backwards. Hold on. Okay, so up here, um, like on the top left picture, we know that we have our kidney, um, which connects to our ureter, which connects down to the bladder. Um, and if there's a narrowing or blockage up where the ureter meets the kidney, um, you get this problem. So this um, whole black area is lots of pee um, hanging around in the kidney because there's a narrowing or blockage in that ureter tube. Um, and this particular patient is a patient of mine who needs surgery from this. You don't always need surgery, but um, this is just an example of um, imaging that I look at on a multiple times a day, um, looking at kidneys and bladders and ureters um, and looking at how, the, all of, how all of that connects and how something, sometimes the plumbing doesn't work correctly or isn't formed correctly. Andy was talking all about GI um, stuff and I talk a lot about poop in my job. So um, a lot of people don't realize how much the bowel and the bladder are connected or they don't work very well together. So, um, so when you're talking about problems like again, that overactive bladder stuff like urgency and frequency and leakage of pee and that sort of thing, it's really important to think about poop. And so understanding how our body, um, how those parts fit into our body is really important. So for example, on the left, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor or not, um, but on the, you can, okay, perfect. So on the left here, um, so this is an X-ray of someone's midsection, obviously. So spine is up here, ribs are up here, pelvis is here. Um, and so this is a little girl that's coming to me with complaints about urgency and frequency and um, overactive bladder um, complaints. And the parents are like, oh yeah, she poops every day, no problems, nice soft poops. And then sometimes we get these x-rays to help us out. And so this black, gray, this black fluffy stuff is all poop. So you can see up here, her ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, all this gray stuff is poop. And then here in her rectum is a big ball of poop. Um, this black, gray, fluffy ball um, is all poop. And so we know that the bladder kind of sits right in front of this space from my understanding of how the body is made and put together. Um, and what happens is basically what you see in this little schematic over on the right, where the poop is pressing on the bladder and causing lots of bladder irritability and urgency. So um, kind of understanding how all of these pieces fit in the body and how sometimes when there's kind of an issue that we might think is separate um, actually does connect to the system that I talk about every day. And then I just also wanted to kind of highlight when we were thinking about healthcare careers and how if you have a student that's really interested in um, kind of anatomy, physiology stuff or science in general, um, I think there's Sometimes people think like, oh, you want to go into healthcare, you should be a doctor or you should be a nurse and kind of forget all of the possible um, avenues that there are to work in some kind of medical capacity um, if there's an interest in, in kind of the body and that sort of sciencey piece. So um, I just kind of made this little list of things that um, you might not think about. So there's lots of um, jobs that are easier to um, get training for. Um, that don't require four years of school. So that's jobs like a certified nursing assistant, a medical assistant, or a, a licensed practical nurse. Um, again, registered nurses, 
as I talked about, can kind of come through a variety of different educational um, pathways, but registered nurses work in all kinds of um, places, like in the hospital, in outpatient setting, um, in home health, um, in schools, as you know, um, all kinds of spaces that um, RNs work. There's also a whole host of different advanced practice registered nurses. So I'm a nurse practitioner, but there's um, all kinds of other ways that um, registered nurses can continue their education and, and further their practice. So um, for example, a certified nurse anesthetist, those are um, uh, advanced practice nurses that do anesthesia in the OR, um, midwives, um, and physician assistants. So they're not nurses, but they're, they're um, people that have, have a bachelor's degree and then an, an intensive training program, um, usually over about three years to become a physician's assistant and have a similar scope of practice to what I have as a nurse practitioner. Um, obviously physicians, um, people who do labs with phlebotomy, radiology, um, physical occupational and speech therapy, even administrative support to support um, medical practices and hospitals and things like that. My, um, I have an awesome administrative assistant even who, um, she doesn't have medical training, but she works with me on a day-to-day -day basis and, and understands kind of a lot of what I do because she has to talk about it with patients all day. People can work on kind of the business side of things, healthcare administration, um, dentists, dietitians, EMTs, respiratory therapists, coders, research. There's all kinds of ways that um, people who have an interest in um, physiology and science and the body can kind of put that to use in a job that's um, interesting and fits their other um, skills that they might have. And I think that is about, oh, I did want to mention this one other thing. We're talking all about working in medicine and nursing and what I do all day, but I also think even if you're teaching students who are never going to go into medicine at all, that having some degree of understanding of our body is really important for advocating for ourselves and those that we love. I think that it is, there's lots of places to get medical care. There's lots of information about our bodies that exists in the world on the internet that may or may not be true. Um, there's a lot of, especially as we're seeing with the pandemic, we're seeing a lot of people that are saying things that are supposedly scientific that aren't actually true. And so I think having that education and that knowledge, even if you don't go into medicine at all, but just having that base knowledge when you're getting healthcare for yourself, for your family, or evaluating um, different things that you do or don't want to do for your body or those for your loved ones is really important to have that kind of baseline knowledge so that you know that you're making really informed decisions uh, for yourself and your family. And with that, I think that is all I have. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. That was actually, that was very interesting. Um...